My name is Jason Ma. I was born in Lubbock, Texas, and I grew up in Northern California. I moved to Los Angeles five years ago, and I love this place. Besides the traffic, why wouldn't anyone love Los Angeles? We have all the glamour, all the beaches, all the money, all the cars, and all the stars. It's the entertainment capital of the world. Everything made here reaches the rest of the world. But is this really what life is all about? You see, as a pastor living in Los Angeles, I struggle every day with the values this entertainment culture encourages. On the other side of the world, in a region called the 1040 Window, I've seen and experienced a lifestyle that exemplifies a different kind of value on existence. A value that goes beyond the materialistic ways our culture has grown. A value that is defined by faith and not status. This 1040 Window is a missionary field that spans from 10 degrees north latitude to 40 degrees north latitude, from Africa to Asia. Let me show you. Throughout history, religion has always played a significant role in shaping the global landscape. If this is the case, then what role does religion play in Asia? What do they believe in? Does Christianity even exist out there? We start our journey in my hometown, the Bay Area, California, to meet a mentor, pastor, and spiritual father of mine. This cultural icon and reverend has experienced life throughout the world, performed and spoken to millions of people as a hip hop legend. He also coined the term, you've got to pray just to make it today. The children of Asia have a heart for God. God sees Asia's heart. You think he would abandon men and women who love him? Now keep in mind, unlike previous historical rises and falls of, of culture, men and women of Christ are already in place in Asia. They're already positioned. And the world is now looking to Asia. Imagine that. Oh, our economic is down. China's economics are up. But at the same time, there's been a tremendous spiritual movement. So it makes it very, very clear to me that Asia is going to play a central role in the return of Christ, bottom line. And you don't have to accept it, it's already happening. Next, we went to Kansas City to consult with a leader, inspiration, and a mentor of mine, Mike Pickle. He's the founder of the International House of Prayer, also known as IHOP. This is a 24-hour prayer center, or as some would call it, a modern-day monastery. He has an insightful perspective on the current state of Asia. Everybody of Asian descent, you don't mind standing up. Half Asian, third Asian, whole, it doesn't matter. Stand up if you want. Oh boy, here we go, yay. Woo! What's happening in Asia right now is actually the greatest move of God in human history. The book of Revelation makes clear in Revelation chapter 16 
It talks about a block of nations called the Kings of the East. It's the only block of nations in the Bible that has resisted the Antichrist. And God is saying, Asia is my point of emphasis. Watch Asia, get behind Asia, follow the leadership of Asia, support Asia, because Asia is not just the evil dragon empire that the media says. And it's, it's a massive implication that the church around the world support this movement and even be influenced by it. Most of the leadership of the prayer movement in the earth, most of the martyrs in the body of Christ of the earth are in India and all through Asia. I mean, this is real. God is stirring up a part of the body of Christ that will have no fear to march right into the Middle East. Beloved, there is a mighty move that God is stirring out of Asia right now, of young apostles and prophets throughout all of the countries of Asia, and they are going to be a force that will be terrifying to the powers of darkness. Prophecies, revelations, end times. Could all this become a reality? And all of this is happening in Asia. The Bible states that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What kind of faith do people in Asia actually believe in? In the beginning, there was one light in Asia, one deity, one religion, one united culture under a single entity, Shangdi. There are clues that reveal the presence of Christianity in ancient cultures. The Chinese character for temptation, Lan, means to covet or to desire something forbidden. The Lan character is made up of three elements, two trees and a female. Perhaps these two trees could have symbolized the grand forestry in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Respectively, the female character suggests Eve, the first woman ever created. As the story of Genesis goes, Eve committed the first sin in human history, the sin of coveting, desiring the forbidden fruit. Before the kitchen gods, before the warring gods, before the fertility gods, there was just a god, Shangdi. He was the father of all. But it is human nature to fight and diversify, causing discourse, individualization and denomination. What developed over thousands of years was an influx of other religions into the Asia regions. Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, Islam, and many others spread quickly. So throughout several dynasties, the gospel continued to cultivate in the West, leaving Asia in darkness. Then during one of China's greatest Renaissance periods, the Tang Dynasty, the Nestorians found their way east on the Silk Road. They were granted court by Emperor Tang Taizhong of China. And so, as missionaries usually do, they share the gospel. Over time, their presence was so cherished by Emperor Tang that he built a seven-story temple outside the imperial city, now known as Xi'an. The Christians became known throughout the land as the religion of light and were granted freedom to share the gospel with the people of China. Once again, the religion of one God found a home in Asia. And over 1,300 years later, this temple of illumination serves as a little light in the darkness. So this is called the Church of the East. Come Holy Spirit. The black stone rising from the turtle below was inscribed in the mid to late 700s AD to commemorate the opening of a Christian seminary and the pagoda and the pagoda you see here. 
one of the most open-minded and thus prosperous in China's 5,000-year history. Today, the current government has restored this landmark in recognition of its important international historical significance. Oh, you got a cross on there. Wow. Look at that. The cross is coming to China. Yeah. Jesus is coming down to China. The cross? Yeah. Carrying the cross. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. This is what we're called to do in China. God says he'll confirm the preaching of his gospel with signs, wonders, and miracles. That was a sign. If you don't understand the past, then you'll never understand the future. Our destinies are interconnected with our history. We went to find Brother Song, a great historian and one of the many Christian leaders of the growing revival and house church movement in China. Guangdong 后来呢这个共产党掌权了以后又搞了三十年的政治那么中国有了一个经济基础这个是一个非常好的意思。想想这个，这个是一个非常好的意思。想想这个，这个是一个非常好的意思。想想这个，这个是一个非常好的意思。想想这个，这个是一个非常好的意思。想想这个，这个是一个非常好的意思。想想这
that more than 60% of all social workers um, that helped Sichuan earthquake were Christians from local house churches. Go, Jonathan. Go, Jonathan. Locally, there's Christians here volunteering their time to take care of these orphans and these kids that have special needs and disabilities. It's just touching to be here and to know that there's actual children, you know, being cared for. Korea is a country of extreme cultural change. In the 21st century alone, Korea was under Japanese imperialist rule, fought three wars, and eventually split into two countries. Despite all this, South Korea has become one of the top 20 economies in the world, one of the leading producers of electronic components, a major player in Asia's entertainment industry, and ranked eighth in the world with 31 medals in the 2008 Olympics. A hundred years ago, there were maybe a hundred Christians in Korea. Now Korean Christians register in the millions, and the largest churches in the world are in South Korea. It's about 4 a.m. in South Korea. Beautiful Seoul, Korea. Right here. Easter Sunday. We're about to go experience about 10 to 15,000 South Koreans wake up and celebrate Easter. It's gonna be awesome. I'm excited, I can sleep all night. I, can, I woke up like 10 times. Just imagine thousands and thousands of Koreans fervently praying early in the morning and, and worshiping God in the middle of City Hall. It's gonna be awesome. One of the most amazing things is that people are actually being bussed in from around the nation. And you can see people still scrambling for chairs, and there's buses all around, and people can't even get seats. This is complete Jesus insanity. And once again, this is not North America, this is South Korea. 100 years ago, barely any Christians. Today, the whole nation is worshiping God. Father God, we just come before you this morning. It's a glorious and beautiful morning in Seoul, Korea. We simply ask you, Father God, that you would bless this nation. God, we worship you, God, this Easter morning, and we just ask you, God, that you would fill Seoul, that you would fill Korea with the knowledge of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, words can't express it. I mean, we had... An amazing morning, Easter Sunday, 5 a.m. Probably had about 25, 30,000 Koreans here worshiping. And if you could actually listen to the message that was given by Pastor O, he said, we're a small nation, yet we have a very significant purpose, especially in these times. And he gave a specific reference to how it's going from the Western church to now the Asians and the church in Asia having to take responsibility humbly with the leadership of the world not just politically, not just economically, but spiritually. All I gotta say is that for sure, God is in Korea, Jesus is risen, and I believe that this nation has an incredible, incredible role to play in bringing the gospel to all nations. To influence the youth of a nation, you first have to understand their culture. 
I got to talk with Christian ethics professor Sung B. Nim to hear his thoughts on the youth of Korea. When we are trying to make a kind of a harmony mm-hmm. or the integration of society, uh, we have to understand each culture mm. from others' perspective. Mm. Because although gospel is absolute, culture is not absolute. Culture right. is reality. Changing. Yeah. Do you think pop culture in Korea is the key to reaching the young people? Yeah, yeah, very influential. Nowadays, they don't do listen to the you know parents. Yeah. But parents is the uh, symbol of pre-modern culture. Mm. You know, but teachers, they are symbols of modern, modern culture. culture right? Yeah. Pop artists, they are symbols of post-modern culture. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Even in a country where Christianity is the majority, there are still societal problems. Recently, a suicide trend has been taking over the celebrity culture. A young actress recently took her life because of the pressures and corruptions of the industry. She was one of six in the past year. Many of these celebrities have no community to help them in their troubled times. Some churches are specifically ministering to those in the entertainment industry. Actors, directors, managers, producers are part of a growing movement that is changing this industry from within. have emulated this celebrity trend in the form of new clubs called the Suicide Clubs. I went to talk with my friend, Martin Chung, the manager of Daniel Henney, who you might know as Agent Zero in Wolverine, to learn about why these things are happening and how it's affecting youth culture in Korea. Celebrities are gods in Korea. Young people, they copy whatever the celebrities are doing. If you go around and serving all these youth and teenagers about what they want to become. Like, you know, becoming a celebrity is the number one answer for them. And, you know, I just learned yesterday that five people committed suicide in this motel room. They just, they just got together. There's a website available, I guess, for people who are interested in committing suicide. They don't know who they are. You know, what they do became who they are, and that's really sad. I'm a member of the group called Jinushin. We started off uh, our group in 97 when there wasn't like that much hip hop, you know? Not too many people knew about hip hop in Korea. There's two brands that I made and then there's some other stuff, you know, other brands that's in the store. I wanted to put little things on my belief and my faith on a clothing. So you're promoting your values through fashion. Yeah. So they're actually wearing more than just clothing, they're wearing a message. Mm-hmm. Hip-hop is my passport to the youth. You know, like a lot of pastors and a lot of people in church try to reach out to the youth people. Right. But then it's really hard. Right. They don't they don't really listen to it. Of course. Yeah. But then they listen to hip-hop every day. So I think he gave me that to reach out to the youth people. We adopted six kids through our compassion. And last May, I was supposed to go and visit one of the girls that we've been supporting. She sent me a letter. It was with a crayon, little message, and little drawing. And it said, I love you, mommy, Chung Hae Young, which is my wife's name. My wife saw, like, read that letter and was really touched. So I'm gonna go see that child. All we did was send her $35 a month and you know, write letters, pray for her. And she became without hope, without dream, to a bright kid with dream and hope. 
you know, we've been saving up for a house. You know, everyone dream yeah, for a house. If we are not like put that buying house dream behind, we're able to uh, support 100 kids. So after she came back from Philippines, I'm gonna change a little. Let my dream be giving dream to this 100 kids. So you're a father of 100 kids. 103. 103. <laughs> A university student emailed us when we were in Korea to go visit her church. It was called Joyful Church. So, we went. Oh, oh my God. Oh my. It's a city about an hour away from the city of Seoul. And uh, this church actually is about more than 50% college students and young people. We're about to go see a thousand students or, or so uh, preparing. Some of them came in four hours before uh, tonight's gathering because they're hungry for revival. It was a Wednesday night, and the worship began at 9 p.m. I don't know about you, but my Wednesday night Bible study does not look like this. These kids were on fire. You could feel the energy in the air. There were over a thousand students. And then around midnight, that's when it really got started. Trying to explain the experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit, being born again in the Spirit, one of the things that transpire when one is overjoyed, uh, when one spirit is communicating with God's spirit. Because when you start talking about speaking in tongues, you're talking about your spirit communicating with God's spirit in a language that is not discernible or understandable by linguists, not understandable by anybody except somebody else with the gift. Christianity without experiencing the presence of God is an empty, powerless religion. But when you experience Him for real, your life is changed forever. You cannot go back to living the life that you once lived. A hundred years ago, during the Great Opium War, Hong Kong was handed over to Britain. Why did the British want Hong Kong? Hong Kong served as a window and liaison to the mighty China. For the last 100 years, this tiny island on the southern tip of China was crucial in the development of international economics of Asia. And to this day, Hong Kong has flourished not only as a port city to China, but an international epicenter for trade, business, and culture. Hong Kong has never been big. Hong Kong doesn't have a gold mine, doesn't have a diamond mine, doesn't have even coal or ore or, 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 or coal. We don't have anything. It's just a barren little rocky island. But then God has, God has allowed people of creativity, people of connectability, and people of entrepreneurship 
to sort of converge into this island. Hong Kong's greatest contribution is finding its own identity, discovering our own strength, and play it as a catalyst. No international city is complete without Western influence. In 2005, Hong Kong Disneyland was built. And in 2009, Noah's Ark has landed. Well, it all started um, in the 90s, when, when I was part of the legal team developing this island. In about February 1998, Pastor David Wang and I we were just talking at my home. And Esther was drawing a picture. And she was drawing the, a picture of Noah's Ark. And I think it just happened um, to us that we should do the Noah's Ark on Mauan Island. It just came as an idea, as a vision. And after the first five years was over, San Hong Kai properties took it very seriously. I think by that time, they decided to build it. So they researched into it, and here you are. After almost 11 years, this will be uh, open in the next few months. Do you think it's significant that of all the places in the world that Noah's Ark, or the remaking of Noah's Ark, would be in Hong Kong? Why do you think God would choose here, Hong Kong? Well, one of my, my uh, theory is in the next century, this coming 10 years or 20 years, uh, I think China will play a larger role in world adventures. So there is every reason why the Lord chose Hong Kong and China being like a gateway. Uh, I think this message of hope and, and uh, salvation can come out of China to the rest of the world too. In my journeys, I've had the opportunity to meet some amazing individuals of this generation. Finding faith is a huge step for anyone, but when faith comes to a celebrity who has it all, the journey can be truly deafening. The entertainment culture can be very difficult to navigate righteously, but the ability to influence many is that much greater. I admire and I look up to these brothers and sisters. In America, Jin discovered his passion as the first Chinese-American rapper on a major record label. But here in Hong Kong, he's found something better. He's found his faith. My career, it's definitely had its ups and downs. And at one point, a couple years ago, it was, it was pretty gloomy. The moment that you kind of lose sight of what it all really means, it can be gone like that. I think that at a certain moment, God did decide, I, I need to test Jin. I need to test his faith. What does faith mean to you? It's kind of just allowing yourself to let go to a lot of things. I may or may not achieve the things that I want to achieve as, as a young man, as an artist, let's just say. Faith is trusting whatever the outcome is, trusting that this, the decision has been made by God already. It's not even about that. God I'm sorry guys, thank you. I am living in Hong Kong and only because I'm here in Hong Kong and not until I arrived here in Hong Kong has my relationship with God been stronger than ever. It's almost like those two things are parallel. I never really even sat down to think about Christianity and Hong Kong and what was the correlation and what it's like out here. You know, because even back in the States before I got out here, it wasn't a, a topic that crossed my mind ever. But then to come out here, to, to have a chance to kind of further my relationship with God, to see the movement that's growing in Hong Kong, it's, it's, it's so amazing. I mean, that would be the first word that comes to my mind. It's amazing, it's inspiring, and I think it's just the beginning. To, to know that I'm able to crawl out of that hole that I was in, and I'm still continuing to climb right now at this very moment, but right now I have something that I didn't have before, 
when I didn't have when I first got my, my first ever record deal. You know, when I was on national television and, you know, major radio stations. I had all that, but what I didn't have, I didn't have God. And right now, yeah, all those things may be gone, but I feel like in return, what I have is just worth so much more. Call to All is one of the largest international mission conferences in the world today. Every year, it gathers together every major mission and denominational movement for one purpose, to finish the Great Commission. So what is the significance of this international convention being held here in Hong Kong? We are here, Lord. We are here, Lord. In the Christian world, there are leaders. And then, there are leaders. Some of the most important Christian pioneers of this generation shared their thoughts with us about the current future of Asia. I believe that Asia is absolutely central to God's plan to reach the world. Things have really changed a lot in Asia since I came as a missionary to Indonesia because it really was a mission field there. It's still a mission field, but now there's a mission force. There is just no doubt for people that really study missions that there is something dynamic happening in the Asian church. My generation has failed in getting the whole gospel to the whole world. Uh, great advances, but there's so much left to be done. But there's another whole generation of people that are coming up. So the baton has to be passed, and we have to do everything we can to equip the next generation to fulfill the mandate that God has given to them. The youth are rising up as Asians in numbers that the West could never fulfill. I just see this Asian tsunami, only it's people, and you know, just thousands of people that God is going to use just to sweep across the nations. You know, like when a tsunami comes, you can't stop it. And where God reaches people, God subsequently sends people. I love Taiwan. The food, the people, the spirit on this island is just amazing. A small island that throughout history was occupied by many countries served as another window to China. After World War II, a rapid economic growth spurt ensued with the arrival of the exiled KMT. Today, not only is Taipei a major economic player in the world, but it's a young influential culture. Pop culture icons have become very popular as Taipei has become likened to be the Los Angeles of Asia. Faith is also very prevalent here. And there are many churches and even two Christian television channels. One of my brothers, Vanessa Wu, whom I call the Justin Timberlake of Taiwan, shared some of his time to tell us his story. I literally went on this roller coaster up and down of uh, seven years after I accepted Christ saying I'm Christian, but not living a Christian way of life. So I go to church, and I open the Bible. First thing that fell out was, was this card. It fell on the ground. Right when I looked at it, it says, for the person. It says, believing that true love waits. And I make a commitment to God, myself, my family, my friends, my future mate, and my future children to be sexually abstinent from this day until the day I enter a biblical marriage relationship, sign and date. I looked at this card in disbelief still, it took me a couple days to, to really digest this, absorb this, absorb what just happened. Like literally, this is the first direct sign I felt that God was just talking to me after I was praying about this for so long. And then I said, okay, all right, I'm gonna do it. One year. And man, right afterwards, women just came more and more and more, even more beautiful than the ones I met before. I was like, what's going on? But. It was so amazing that I was able to pull the strength from God and just to be able to say no. And I felt liberated when I said no. 
you're saying that God's better than sex, God's better than alcohol. Uh, <laughs> why is God better? Why is God better? Um, why is God better than sex? God is better than sex because after I said no to sex, um, God has just showed me so many more um, things in life that are more important. More and more artists are turning their lives to Christ and just the Holy Spirit is moving, definitely moving for something big. Vanessa was recently interviewed on Taiwan's first Christian television channel, Good TV. Good TV is the first Christian television channel in Taiwan. We got to talk with the CEO and founder of Good TV, Elder Tony, about his journey and vision to share the gospel through media. Our channel, Good TV, is very different with uh, American uh, Christian channel. They are geared for Christian. Mm -hmm. Our viewers per month at present now is already over 5 million. But 60-70% are non-Christian. Our channel must be aiming at evangelism. The problem of preaching gospel or evangelism in uh, this country or in Asia is this is not our culture and the church are too far from people's life. You only open on Sunday, you know, and you have to dress up to go. It's not really mixed with people. So when you have a channel they watch every day, they feel that this is a culture influencing. They feel they're getting closer to you. So in a way, I, um, I feel very sorry that uh, in our country, you know, that uh, it's not like the Western world. That in Western world, uh, it's, it's, it's a Christian uh, culture, you know. And people definitely had the chance to hear the gospel. If we hear the name. Here, when you go out, sometimes people never heard the name of Jesus. The country must turn to God. The nation must be changed. The society must be changed, must be transformed. This can only happen when the marketplace people are raising up and boldly witness God. It's good TV. We need In 1994, an 18-year-old was caned for graffiti. And at one point, you couldn't chew gum anywhere in the whole country. Singapore is known for its strict and unforgiving laws governing its people. But it's also well known for its healthy economy, strong government, clean streets, and overall lifestyle. Created to be the perfect city-state and future model society for the world, Singapore's societal culture is very unique. Even with an island population of 4.6 million, by car, you can circle the whole island in an hour. But as Asia changes, modern Singapore changes as well. Surely, but quietly, faith grows on this small but powerful island. Through one of my Christian contacts, we were blessed to meet a wonderful and out-of-the-box sister, Elim Chu. Elim Chu has dedicated her faith to the marketplace. She's opened several businesses, and her company has become a multi-million dollar social enterprise. Her whole goal is to make money, but the money she makes is not for her. It's for a higher purpose. You know, when we talk about uh, in the end days where the wealth is transferred to the righteous, and I thought that this transfer from the West into the East is not for the businessman, but to impact the less fortunate. I realized that social innovation and social entrepreneurship it's a new you know, movement that we are creating uh, that we use the money to impact the less advantaged people mm. uh, using a business model to solve social issues. Mm. That's when I realised that the money is not for me, the money is working through me for the people. So we, have our, we do our, our accessories, right. uh, then we have our warehouse. This half here is 77th Street. Uh, we specialise a little bit more on ladies. Uh, 
but we also do have uh, our menswear as well, and occasionally we buy from our wholesale department as well. You guys also distribute some American brands? Uh, we distribute uh, some uh, foreign American yeah. brands or even uh, brands like Billabong, uh, uh -huh. we also have Dickies. And when we first made our first $50,000, uh, you know, wow, you look at it and say, wow, profit, you know, and it was the first time. And we went to church, and then uh, we were sitting there, and suddenly Pastor Kong came out, and he came out and he said, oh, you know, we are looking for $50,000 to help build sex churches in Gujarat, India. And somehow, the word yes came out from me, uh, and we gave the 50000 that we had. And after we gave, you know, it was forgotten for a while, one and a half years later, Pastor Kong came out and said, you know what? It was a very terrible earthquake that happened in Gujarat, India. Thousands and thousands of people died. Everything collapsed in, this, in Gujarat, except six little churches that stood, didn't collapse, became the help centre. And then that hits us to realise that God has chosen us one and a half years before time for a purpose ahead, which is one and a half years later. Could you give up your first $50,000 profit? What a commitment to her faith. We learned about many of Elam's social enterprises, but one stood out especially. Elam served as a liaison between the government and the next generation to build a special wall. Well, um, I'm a graffiti artist, so basically I'm just uh, uh, here to do graffiti and spread the news that graffiti is not all about illegal stuff. Right. It can also be an artistic form. This is legal graffiti in Singapore. Redefining what urban art is. It's legal, it's positive, it's inspiring, it's challenging, and it's speaking a new language to the next generation. My own personal faith is uh, just uh, doing stuff that I like and uh, at the same time um, don't forget to say my prayers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So is your background uh, just like you believe in God? or? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I'm a Muslim. Okay, uh, so you yeah. pray as a Muslim. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of faith to do what you do. Yeah. Right? Yes. Indonesia is the fourth most populated country in the world, and yet, it is one of the poorest. It is a country that has gone through political strife in the form of riots almost every 10 years. It is a country where corruption is blatant and obvious, like the distance between the rich and the poor. Muslims dominate this country, for Indonesia has the most followers of Islam in the world. And even in this climate of opportunity, a tiny minority of Christians are steadily building a movement. But the story of faith begins in 1998, in the midst of one of the most horrible riots ever in a hot urban city called Surabaya on the southern part of the island of Java. My spiritual big brother, Pastor Philip Montofa, tells us his story. I actually felt the call to come back to Indonesia when a certain Christian band from Indonesia came and visited our church and sang a song about, the, the, the title of the song is Indonesia for your glory, Lord. I never planned to go back to Indonesia whatsoever. I, I, I made a decision in the year of 1997 that I would go back the next year, which is 1998. Riots began because Indonesia has political instability, economical problems. That's why the rich and the poor, the gap is so huge, and it's so deep. The riots started the 13th of May, and I was supposed to go back on the 14th. And everyone just told me, cancel my plan. The phones just ring in my house, in my room, just tell me, just stop, Philip. Everyone who knows me and cares for me just say to me, do not go back to Indonesia. Everybody who can afford it will leave Indonesia right now. On the day, the 14th of May, I knelt beside my bed. I said, Lord Jesus, you've been too good to me. You do not have to give me anything. To, you don't have to persuade me. So I said, just give me one simple sign, the inner peace in my heart. And at that moment, I felt an inner peace. And I flew on the 14th of May, 1998, when Indonesia was at the worst moment. The only word that can describe Indonesia then, during that time is just one word, hell. But I returned to hell to bring down the kingdom of heaven. This evening, this, this evening, God wants me to tell you 
that he wants to make each and every one of you a his fisher of men. Sama sekali gak bisa ngeri. Ini bisa ngeri. Yourself safe, please. What's your only? I beg you, do I need to go up there and beg you? What's your that? I'll go up. You know, at first, when I returned to Indonesia, my ministry was preaching the gospel to the Muslims. I did not force Christianity on them, I asked them for their needs what their needs were that cannot be met by human beings, cannot be met by doctors, cannot be met by their religious leaders. I would just offer them a pure, simple love of Jesus Christ, and I told them how Jesus loved them, and that Jesus in me is able to touch them. And I would just pray for people. People are getting healed. The lame just walk. Cancers just fall off in front of the eyes of many. And the deaf could hear again. The blind saw. My faith starts from this, from a realization that many people in my country doubt the Christian God. And most sadly, those people who doubt Christian God are the Christians themselves. Who, if not us, who have realized this fact, this truth, to come forward and say, Dear Jesus, use me in a way that boggles the mind of Christian. So I just come forward and volunteer myself and say, Lord Jesus, I'll go to the airport. I'll go to the most impossible place right now we can think of is the runway in an international airbase. Let's do something there and let's proclaim the name of Jesus right there. What's up, Army of God? Yeah! Buat kalian yang sudah siap, siapkan hatimu, siapkan tenagamu, kita akan menari, melompat, bersuka cita, karena kemenangan yang Tuhan berikan buat kita. Haleluya! This is amazing. You don't see this happening anywhere. I mean, this was not going to happen in LA. You know, this is not going to happen in anywhere in the United States where they actually have a crusade that's MTV style with the power of the Spirit. You preach, they no holds barred, you know, no compromise, holiness, repentance message. And then you see people willing to get dunked in water and get baptized to obey Jesus. In a Muslim country. In a Muslim country. What religion were you before? Islam. is a Muslim. You were a Muslim. But why do you choose Jesus tonight? She asked Jesus to forgive her sin. That's why she accepted Jesus tonight. Do you feel that your sins are forgiven? How do you feel? feels that a uh, real living God is moving into her life. Who, who is Jesus to you? Jesus, siapa dalam dirimu sekarang? Segalanya. Everything. What's your hope for Indonesia? Pengharapanmu buat Indonesia apa? Saya harap Indonesia lebih baik lagi dan lebih banyak orang yang bisa terima Yesus. I really hope that Indonesia will move forward and more people will come to know Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Congratulations. This is why God is choosing Asia right now. This is why. It's because 
Asians are not afraid to be obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Basically, as people get saved, the Spirit of God comes down upon the people, and so when light hits darkness, demons and darkness start manifesting. So a lot of people start manifesting demons at these at these crusades. And so what you're seeing right now is what they have is what they call a deliverance tent. So anyone that starts manifesting with demonic manifestations or evil spirits, they come here to get delivered. But here in the third world, what you see is you know the manifestations of the spirit and they actually believe that people have evil spirits and they deliver them through the name of Jesus Christ because the Bible says when you believe in my name you will cast out demons if you believe and you're baptized you will cast out demons Mark 16 18 oh, her name is Felicia Sheila. but she, she always said she's Sheila The point of a crusade is to save as many unbelievers as possible. In 2009, at the Army of God, over 1,200 people repented and were saved. Supaya apa? Supaya malam ini Roh Kudus akan berhembus dari empat penjuru, mengepung semua orang yang hadir yang hari ini begini banyak. Coba lihat kanan kirinya begini banyak sampai banyak orang harus berdiri nggak bisa duduk. Puluhan ribu orang ada di sini hari ini dan mereka haus mencari. Tuhan Yesus Kristus melompat di tembok tanpa diundang. Saudara, kita perlu rohnya Yesus di hidup kita. Karena Yesus itu juru selamat. Bagi yang non-Kristen hari ini, dengar saya baik-baik. Agama tidak menyelamatkan kita. Tetapi menyadari Topang pengorbanan Yesus itu adalah untuk diri kita. Dia juru selamat kita orang berdosa. Dia Tuhan kita ciptaannya. Dia anak Allah. Anda siap? Mulai keluar, mulai keluar, mulai keluar, mulai keluar dari semua. Mulai keluar orang-orang berdosa semua. Tidak ada satu pun orang berdosa yang luput dari kasih Allah. Seperti halnya tidak ada satu pun dosa yang akan luput dari hukuman Allah. Satu, dua, tiga. Nyanyi, nyanyi, semua singar, singar, singar. Tiga karya terbesar dalam. Come on, tepuk tangan, tepuk tangan. Haleluya. Yang selam. Come on, sepuluh langkah, dua puluh langkah, empat puluh langkah. Come on. It is not very easy to be Christians. Our mission, our goal, is to win the battle of unbelief. The true battle of unbelief is among His people. If His people believe, the world will believe. We are the army of God. And the most, most dominant nation, we shine. 
The Bible clearly states when the gospel reaches the whole earth, the end will come. Many Christians have committed their lives to sharing the gospel with the unreached people of the 1040 window. Missions work is a strong testament to the sacrifice of a believer. What would you do for what you believed in? We've seen people give up their money for their faith. We've seen people commit their careers to their faith. We've seen people surrender their reputations for their faith. But in this day and age, will people actually give up their lives for their faith? There's a movement called the Back to Jerusalem movement, where the Christians in Asia believe it is their destiny to take the gospel from Asia to the last remaining unreached countries within Central Asia, the Middle East, and finally Jerusalem. Because of current global politics, it's nearly impossible for Western missionaries to enter into these regions. Already, Asian Christians have taken this unique opportunity. But missionary work does not always come in the form of waving a Bible. This time, it comes in the form of medical aid. Twenty-three South Korean Christian nationals are being held captive in an undisclosed location in Afghanistan by members of the Islamic Taliban terrorist group. Uh,三교담당교육자로일을하고있고요그리고또교회그성도들의일부를제가이렇게돌보는일을하고있습니다2007년여름에저희그샘물교회에서이제단기봉사팀을이렇게세계각국에제가기억하기로는아마여덟개
그렇지만 난 나이도 많고 그러니까 살 만큼 살았으니까 아, 제가 먼저 나와 있습니다. 이렇게 말씀을 드렸더니 내 목사님이 그런 말씀 하셨어요. 아, 자기는 아, 나중에 예, 목회를 하다가 나이가 들면 선교지에 가서 여생을 이렇게 섬기다가 보내기로 결심을 했다. 그러니 자기 아무 걱정 말라 이런 말씀을 하셨고 어, some glorious happenings out there in the 1040 window. Goodness, success, and blessings are all incredible things to be a witness of. Brother Zong states that the next 30 years will be the Christianization of China. But he did not say this will be an easy road. The next 30 years may be filled with conflict and wars. There'll be more pain, more sacrifice, and even more deaths. On the other hand, Christianity is not just about converting and militant evangelism. Christianity on an individual level is a humanitarian faith. It's about positively influencing the youth of tomorrow. It's about giving hope to disadvantaged kids. It's about helping a Muslim artist find a wall to practice his art on. It's about creating a community for people in hard times. Christianity is about healing, both physically and spiritually. For we all know, this world needs it right now. There's a tsunami of influence on the brink of modernization on the other side of the world. What role will Christianity play in this tide? I've learned that in the East, a spiritual life is not an easy life. For all the glory, there's suffering. For all the light, there is dark. For me, I'm humbled and inspired every day by my brothers and sisters in Asia, by their radical faith and their lives of sacrifice and love. They truly walk by faith and not by sight. The West has come to a point where men uh, of power who claim Christ, claim God, have become neglectors of the spirit. So as Asia rises, unlike the past, you'll see things that you've never seen before. When it comes down to just, uh, you know, what you ask about, like, the greater purpose. What is the purpose, Jen? What are you doing now? 
uh, I feel like God is still letting me know in his, in his way, little by little. And I think part of what I have to do is, while I'm figuring it out, think of a way to share this whole experience with everybody. I used to not want to be a role model. Now, if I want to be or don't want to be, I am a role model. No matter what, I'm Christian first, I'm a servant of God first, entertainer second. Actually, 100 more came in. We decided to support 100 kids in Korea. So you guys have what? 203 kids now? Yeah. I basically have nothing. I have nothing. But I do have a vision. I do have a heart. And when I receive the vision, I obey. I follow God, and then I experience God. We as Christians must have that creative mindset, must have that creative strength, must have the creative power of influence, and everything is placed on our hands. And God has given us that power to create change. And it's whether do we want to take it up? Yeah. Are you ready for it? Do you want to be that change? For me, faith is not size. I'm, I'm but a simple man. And I say it with all sincerity in my heart. I see faith as a force that works through love. Um, Ganjo, Faith is not just what you believe, but how you live. And for many, as they lift out their faith, they die for their faith. That to me, probably would differentiate the faith in Asia to the faith in the West. It is far more a value to live for and to die for. Let me get a little closer. Yo. Sec, 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 one, two. I'm sitting by the off, me and J. Ma. What did you expect? Freestyle, cross around my neck. What the heck? Might as well. Heaven the hell. Yo, this is J. Ma plus Jinna MC. What could it be except the knock next to me? I'm about to go climb some rocks. Yo, you know, it's about to stop. I think it's six o'clock. Time to pack our bags, head back to home. Yo, when I kick around, yes, I'm in the zone. And you know it's me, chill with G-O-D plus the number one. Yes, real MC. Yo, you know how we like to be chilling by the sea. Everybody about to fall over, fall on the boulder, roll over. Now I'm a god soldier, flow is hot, and you know it's all off the top. Yeah, you know I'm a rock the spot. That's that. Peace out. See you shortly at the premiere of 1040. Peace. Peace. <laughs>